Hi guys, it's YSO256 here, back with another What If video. Today we're going to be discussing what might have happened if Lucius Malfoy had pressed his Dark Mark in Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows instead of Bellatrix. So, let's begin. Our timeline begins when Harry, Hermione and the rest of the people have been brought to Malfoy Nana by Greyback and the rest of the Snatchers. They say that they've caught Harry Potter, and Lucius Malfoy looks at the boy. Hmm, he says in a droll voice. That could be Potter. Hard to tell though, the face is quite stretched. Draco, come look. He gets his son to check, and he says he thinks it might be Potter, but he's not sure. We'd better be sure, Lucius said Narcissa. Sure, before we call him, remember what happened to Roll and Nod. We don't want to end up the same as them. Hmm. Lucius then checks a second time, and he tells it is Potter. What about the girl? says Greyback. What about the girl? Surely she must be the one. He says in his growling voice. Narcissa then looks at Hermione and says, Yes, she was in Naganokins. Draco, look, isn't that the Granger girl? Yeah, it could be, says Draco. He's not even looking at the group at this point. Yes, yes, that's Granger. Then this must be... Yes, this is Weasley! Potter and his friends. Yes, we finally got them where we want them. Bellatrix then comes out and says, what's going on? What is this sissy? We've caught Potter, says Lucius. Potter and his friends, Bellatrix. And without warning, Lucius then presses his dark mark on his left forearm, summoning his master, summoning the Dark Lord, Lord Voldemort. Bellatrix can fill it on her own arm. Yes. He should be called Excellent Work, now, Lucius. The Dark Lord is cunning for you, Potter. Your time is at hand. A few minutes later, Voldemort then arrives and he stares at Harry Potter with an evil smile on his face. Ah, uh, well done, Lucius. Well done, Bellatrix. Harry Potter, the boy who lived, captured and ready to die. Wait, he says, staring at the goblin grip oak. What is that in his hands? He looks at the sword of Gryffindor and is outraged. Bellatrix, I thought I told you to keep that in your vault. My, my lord, I don't know what you mean. It's safe. What you told me to protect is safe, she says in panicking in the voice. Then why do they have the sword, Bellatrix? I, I don't know, my lord. You shall be punished for this. But, but I don't know, my lord. He orders then for Lucius and then Bellatrix to have Potter and his friends taken to the cellar whilst he deals with them first. What about the girl? Says Greyback. Surely I deserve her, my lord. Yes, Greyback. You may have the nud blood for your reward. But I just then cuts Hermione free of the bindings and Greyback grabs her. No! Screams Ron, but he's pulled back with the rest of the others and brought down to the cellars. Greyback then demolishes Hermione and her screams can be heard down in the cellars. Hermione! Hermione! screams Ron. There's nothing you can do about it. 
Hermione is being eaten alive by Greyback, and she is now dead. Harry, Ron, Luna and the rest try to escape the cellar, but there's nothing they can do. Meanwhile, upstairs, they can hear Voldemort screaming at Bellatrix and Lucius. Tell me, you two! How did they get into your bolt? I don't know, my lord! I have no idea! Then Lucia comes up with an idea to save their necks. Perhaps, my lord, it could be a copy. A copy. Perhaps. Bring up the goblin. They then go and bring Rip Hook. And just like the original, he's told by Harry to tell them it's a fake. Voldemort is thrilled at this. <sighs> Very well then. We shall now deal with the boy. Dobby then comes into the cellar and takes Ollivander, Luna and Dean away to Shell Cottage. Ron and Harry are the only two there left. And Voldemort then opens the doors to find them the only two there. What? How did the others escape? He says to himself. Oh well, no matter. It is you I want, Harry Potter. You shall be allowed to face me again. But I guarantee you, boy, this time you will not survive. Bellatrix then cuts Harry free from the bindings and... He and, um, and Voldemort then duel each other in the cellar of Malfoy Manor. Ron tries to assist Harry, but he's killed with an Avada Kedavra killing curse by Bellatrix for trying to interfere with the Dark Lord's plans. Harry and Voldemort had an intense duel, but because Harry no longer has his Yule and Phoenix Feather Wand, or his Holly Wand, he is having to fight Voldemort with the black form wand and it's not doing him any good. Harry is then placed on the ground by a Cruciatus curse and is in intense pain. They call you the boy who lived. Pathetic. Now Harry Potter, it is time for you to die. Don't worry Harry, I'm sure to be quick. It may even be painless. I would not know, for I have never died. He then points his wand at Harry and screams, Avada Kedavra! The boy then falls to the ground and appears to be dead. But little does Voldemort know, he has actually killed a part of his own soul. And that is where we're going to be leaving things for part one. Where we come back, we will see if Harry coming back to life will be any use to taking down Voldemort in this timeline. But for now, guys, you're going to have to wait till next time to find out. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.